It's a cold winter day, but the sun is bright. So it's got me thinking about next hunting season already. Today I've got a predator for you, black bear. Now a lot of times people will say to me, well, I don't really like black bear, they're a little timid, a little, they just don't want anything to do with it. Well, I've got a recipe that's very simple to prepare and we're going to talk about a few of the things that are really important when you're hunting black bear in terms of field care and what you do when your freezer is full. You'll notice beside me I've got some cold running water and it's in a pot. So the first thing to note is that when you're thawing meat, and this goes for any meats, make sure to either do it in the refrigerator two to three days in advance. It really holds the cold for a long time. Uh, but if you want it done quicker, use cold running water. And what happens is that cold running water will slowly take the, the freeze out. It'll gently thaw, but the most important thing is that it will stay food safe. Now talking a bit about field care with black bear because it's a predator and has kind of a different set of bacteria that white tail or elk or moose may have, you need to make sure to get the body cooled down quickly. Make sure to uh, field dress it quickly and, uh, and then get it into a refrigerator, quartered and processed as quickly as you can. So time, you can hear me saying, is really the enemy. Make sure to get it field dressed, make sure to get that body cooled down and then make sure to get it processed. Also make sure to get the hide off that will really add uh, and speed up the cooling process. First thing I have to do, you'll notice that I store uh, almost all of the meat that even when I'm going to use it for grind, I'll start with the connective tissue and the silver skin on. I find that it uh, keeps the texture in the meat better, it holds longer. So I'm going to take that up, I'm going to clean up the connective tissue and then I'm going to get it processed. I've got, a, I've got an old school grinder here and we're going to do some really nice grind. But you're going to love this recipe. It's black bear meatballs and a tomato gravy. And then I've got these beautiful little gnocchi. And all that is is that's a potato dumpling. I think you're going to love this recipe. Whenever trimming, make sure to get a good sharp edge on your knife. Uh, if you don't have a sharpening steel, just uh, make sure to use a sharpening stone. Uh, it's going to make your job so much easier if your knife is sharp. You can see I've already started and I've got a nice pile of black bear here. At first glance, the color is a beautiful tone of red. Um, the smell is extremely clean. As a matter of fact, uh, you'll notice that even when field dressing a black bear, that the smell of the inside is very clean. If you know uh, white-tailed deer, you know that they have a very strong smell when field dressing. The, the black bear is so clean, you can actually say that when it's raw, it actually smells good. It has a, it has a good, clean smell. So that, that says a lot about the meat. Keep in mind that if you ever do smell the meat, and you should always smell that meat, uh, if you ever smell anything that's off, so off-putting, what you're smelling is bacteria and that bacteria is trying to break down the meat. Now if it's bacteria that is all, it's, it, it, it's a good signal that what you're probably dealing with is some meat that's gone bad. In some cases vinegar will kill the bacteria and you can save that meat. But you know, uh, it's really important that your, your field care begins uh, right after the kill and takes you all the way to this point. So the next step, and what I have here, by the way, is I've got a piece of uh, the extension of the rib cage. So it's that little bit of flank. Um, it's fairly thin. It's, this was a small bear. Uh, and it really doesn't have any use. Now, the nice thing about this is I'm able to do this entire dish, but I didn't have to break into one of my nice big roasts. And what I can do is I can use a cut here that would really only be used for quick grilling um, or in this case for grind. Something to talk about also in this case is let's talk a bit about trichinosis. Now trichinosis is not present in all bear meat but just the way salmonella can be present in chicken and E. coli can be present in beef you can have trichinosis present in black bear. It's also sometimes uh, present in wild hog. Does that mean we can't enjoy it? 
No, we don't stop eating chicken. We haven't stopped eating beef. Uh, so what you need to do is make sure that you cook the, for, it has to be fully cooked. There's no such thing as rare, medium rare, well done. It's always well done. It has to be 165 degrees. So you need to have a probe thermometer. It's very important, they're inexpensive. You need to have one so you can check the internal temperature at the deepest part. And in this case, there's no bone, but if you, if you did have a roast with a bone in, it would be not touching the bone. You want a very accurate reading. So 165 degrees is recommended by the CDC. And what that will ensure is that if trichinosis is present, that it will kill it. Now, I have, I have not had it. I have heard from others who have. This is not something that you want. There's nothing to joke around about. So make absolutely certain, just the way you would not serve a chicken breast medium rare, you don't want to serve black bear medium rare. So let's continue with removing. This is the connective tissue in the silver skin that encapsulates the muscles. And what it does allows the muscles to move within the body. We're going to remove that because it will not break down with cooking and it will give an unpleasant texture when we're grinding. If you do come into contact with any fat, the fat from black bear is a beautiful thing. Think of it the same way that you do pork fat. It has great flavor, great texture, and you will not be disappointed if you leave some of that in. Take your knife and gently slide it just underneath that silver skin, and then pulling up a little bit with a sawing motion, go away. Then with a sawing motion, back towards yourself. Now, there's no really wrong way to do this, so don't get too stressed out. You might think, well, that's a lot of meat to lose, but in fact, you'll see the pile I'm left with is a very small pile, it's a very small loss, and it's a loss that's necessary because as I said, this absolutely cannot be left on, this must come off. You can see the natural texture of that muscle. It's actually quite nice. You can see the color as well. Uh, now, I'll just continue to work my way around this cut, removing any of that uh, connective tissue. And then you can see here, this gets pretty thin. I'm not gonna get a whole lot off that piece, so I'm just gonna take that off, remove that. And I wanna show you on the other side that you will have to remove some on the other side. So you turn it over, and this is the part that was facing inside, so to the inside of the bear. And I'm just gonna start by cutting that, and you'll find that some of this, you can see there's a nice layer of fat there. We'll just keep cutting and cleaning as we go, removing anything. See how that reveals that beautiful flesh underneath? So really, that fat and that connective tissue, this, when you get to this point, you can actually just Pull that, just pull it and some of it will naturally come. Gentle strokes down will allow you to remove that and preserve as much of the meat as possible. There's a little bit of fat there, a little bit of connective tissue. If you have any, have any discolorations, you see a little discoloration there, we'll just take that out. Just a little bit of blood there and we'll remove that. You can see that's beautiful. That looks quite nice. I'm going to remove all of this. Every last little bit. It takes a few minutes, but in the end, the quality will be exceptional. Once you have the bear completely trimmed and you've thrown away the silver skin, any excess fat and cleaned it up, the next step before grinding is to make sure to get it cut up into cubes. This will make sure that the grinder doesn't do too much work and more importantly, that the grinder doesn't heat the meat up as you're putting it through. If it's got long sinews and strands, it just makes the grinder work harder and you don't want it heating up. You can see how beautiful the texture of the meat is. And this is something that really, you know, it's worth talking about because of the reputation that Black Bear has. So literally, this is the direction of the grain. So to simplify it, I'm gonna cut across the grain Again, you can see how beautiful that is. I'll slice completely across the grain all the way down this cut. Using the tip of your knife to pass through as you go back will make sure you get a good, clean cut. Then what you wanna do is turn the meat sideways and you wanna slice in the other direction. So that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. 
Remember, this is going to be grind, so it doesn't need to be a good clean cut. It just needs to cut across the grain and then get it into cubes. It's really important to keep the grind cool. One of the little tricks that I have is I'll refrigerate the grinder before I go using it. I'll also refrigerate the bowl that I'm using. That way, it doesn't heat up. Remember, the grinder works using friction. So if it's chilled ahead of time, especially if you've got a lot of grind to do, make sure what in this stands, even if you're using an electric uh, or power grinder, make sure to chill it ahead of time. That way you'll make sure to keep the consistency and the quality of the grind to perfection. You can see as the grind goes through the grinder that there is no sinew. Um, if you hadn't trimmed it, you'd have stringy pieces in there. This is something to get the kids involved with. I don't know why, but the kids absolutely love the grinder. So just keep putting it through, and when it's done, I want you to refrigerate it right away. With the black bear meat all nicely ground, it's time to start building the meatball. Now, I want a few flavor elements that will also bring texture. So I've got celery, I've got some shallots, garlic, and you'll notice in this recipe I use a number of eggs. There's a couple things. First of all, yes, of course, the egg is going to bind that together, but there's a lot of fat and a lot of richness that comes from eggs, and it'll help to keep it moist uh, after cooking. So let's get started with building these meatballs, and then we can get to our sauce. Step one, just crack your eggs into a large bowl. Make sure the bowl is going to be big enough for you to handle and mix all of that ground bear and all these ingredients together. Crack them all in and then whisk them together. Just don't over whisk them. We don't want to whip this up too much, just enough to incorporate them. Fresh herbs really bring this to life. I've got some fresh oregano here. I'm just literally peeling off the leaves, making sure not to put the stem in. And then I've got fresh thyme as well. Again, stripping those leaves off. So fragrant and both oregano and thyme love black bear. The next ingredient is celery. Now I love adding this celery because it adds texture. So simply remove the root bottom and then what I like to do is just take those stalks, set them aside, and I love using the heart of the celery. So the pieces aren't too big, I'll take and score these down the center and then turn this sideways and make a very fine slice. This will give good texture and tremendous flavor, leaves and all. Next, the garlics and shallot is something we're going to use for flavor. Now the shallots are easy to prepare, just simply trim the root end and the tip end, slice them in half, and then peel. Once peeled, I want nice thin slices. Now you could, you could dice this, but dice is a little more work. It's a whole lot easier to just simply slice these end to end, nice thin slices. It'd be bite-sized pieces but again, they're going to give texture to the meatball. So that's the shallots. The next step for the garlic is just as simple as breaking out a clove. And when you do, slice off the bottom, slice the clove in half. And when you do, it makes it extremely easy to peel. Once peeled, lay it flat on the cutting board and pass your knife over finishing with a nice thin slice. Now it's time for the fun part, assembly. And this is something you definitely want to call the kids in for. For some reason, they love mashing their hands inside the meat and making the meatballs. Now you can make the meatballs whatever size you want. If you want to have something that's a one bite, two bite, or you can make giant ones. But to go with the gnocchi, I'm going to make nice little two bite size and uh, we'll get all these flavor ingredients together, starting with putting that ground right on top of the eggs. So first we'll start with this bear meat and it goes, look at that, that is just beautiful. And then we're going to rain down, oh yeah, that beautiful celery, shallots, got lots of fresh herbs in there. And then it's time to start bringing it together.
The last step is to add some all-purpose flour. Now that's going to help to firm it up, soak up some of that liquid, and give us really good texture. One thing I want to share with you before moving on is to make sure that when you're done using your meat grinder to completely disassemble it and then make sure to use bleach or vinegar, give it a good cleaning. I always like to put it in the dishwasher. If you don't have one, let it soak in a little bit of uh, bleach, you know, 10 to 1 bleach. Make sure to kill any bacteria before you clean it up and put it away. It's just a little bit of housekeeping to make sure to keep your food safe. Now for the fun part. So I'm using a one third cup measure, which is kind of perfect for making a two bite meatball. Take it out and then it's just a matter of simply rolling meatballs. Continue to work until all the meatballs are formed and then you can refrigerate them before cooking if you like or right now I have a pan on the stove on medium high heat and I will season these and then get them into some butter and olive oil. With my pan preheated, I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of butter in and a little bit of either canola or extra virgin olive oil to make sure it doesn't burn. The excess fat will stay in the pan, but the nice thing is the butter and the olive oil will both give a ton of flavor. Once the butter is fully melted, you can see it's bubbling there. Gently place the meatballs into the fat, leaving spaces between. And be sure that you don't get splashed with hot oil. Make sure that it's not too hot. Again, medium high heat. And the spaces between are as important as anything else, just to make sure that they will brown up nicely on all sides. The last step is to make sure to give the meatballs a nice dusting of fresh ground black pepper, preferably fresh ground. And I've got some coarse sea salt or some coarse pink Himalayan ground to brighten up those flavors. With the meatballs sauteing away behind me, I want to cook them till they're completely finished. Remember, we want to cook that meat until it is well done. I've got a pan back here ready to go and I'm going to build this pan sauce. Now it's extremely simple to make. I'm going to start with some onions and garlic, finely chopped, in some good olive oil. And then what's really important is to make sure you find a good quality tomato. Now good canned tomatoes are easy to find and I've got one can of crushed and one can of baby romas or you can get baby cherries. The point is you want a little bit of almost a puree texture and then some tomatoes to give it that rustic look and feel and taste that really we need to stand up to bear. So I'm going to build this sauce and get it ready. I'll start by spooning a couple tablespoons of the fat from my saute pan to be able to saute the onions. There's no sense getting more fat. We've got nice bare fat rendering, got a little olive oil, a little butter. That'll be perfect for this pan sauce. Make sure to preheat your pan until the oil and butter are smoking and then it'll have a nice sheen to it. Drop in the shallots and garlic and then stir them around, giving them a nice coating. Make sure to season with salt and pepper. And when they're nicely translucent, slightly browned, it'll take about seven to 10 minutes. It'll be ready to add the rest of the ingredients. Now with all the incredible flavor developed in this pan, I wanna make sure to take advantage of all that. So I've got a little bit of red wine, of course it's a red sauce, and red wine and tomatoes goes great together. I've turned up the heat after removing the uh, bare meatballs, and I'm going to deglaze this pan. That's going to bring up all of those incredible flavors. I'll just use a wooden spoon and scrape the bottom, and as I do, everything on the bottom of that pan is going to come up, and I'm going to take and I'll add this to my sauce. With all those bits, all those good bits off the bottom, I'm going to deglaze this pan 
now using that same liquid. Give it a good stir and almost instantly you'll see the liquid dries out and it's time to add our beautiful tomatoes. The last step to finishing up this sauce is to add some nice green olives, strip in some more of that beautiful fresh oregano. Those leaves will cook down and uh, be just beautiful. Got a little bit of fresh thyme and then the exciting part is we will return these to the pan got these incredible black bear meatballs they're going to soak up some of that tomato gravy tomato gravy is going to take some of their flavor we'll reduce to medium low cover and get started with our gnocchi so make sure to start with a good rolling boil now this, I've seasoned this water with salt. Make sure there's enough salt in it that it tastes of salt. Um, and what happens is your little gnocchi, they're gonna soak up that salty water. They're gonna be perfectly seasoned and ready to serve. The way that you know that they're done, simply drop them in, careful when you do, watch for the splashes. You know when they're finished, when they float to the surface. This dish has really come together easily and quickly. It's a simple pan sauce, a really nice recipe for meatballs, and what could be easier than blanching some gnocchi. It's going to be rich, it's gonna be flavorful, and it's a great way to empty your freezer this time of year, getting ready and thinking about next season. <laughs>